Welcome to today's episode. I'm going to do something a little bit off the cuff today and probably do an STL file you've never seen or never heard of. It's this here. It's called Bite the Bullet. I'll show you where I got it from and I'll show you how I made it. Stay tuned. Here's the model. It's called Bite the Bullet and you can find it on CA Sculpts. It cost me about £20-ish to purchase and uh, I just wanted to do something off the rail, something a little bit different. I came across this quite by accident. Let's have a look at it. As with all projects, the first part is to make sure that everything fits together, do a little bit of sanding, poking and prodding. Now, with the two largest pieces of this model, I've glued them together just using some basic super glue. And I'm going to use some resin welding to seal that gap that you can see in her torso. Now, I've done this many times. Pop a bit of resin on with a toothpick, use an ultraviolet light, hold it on there for about 10 seconds or so just to solidify it and then carry on. And move Move around the model. Now this will help to seal that gap, it'll help to strengthen the join as well. Um, what you do need to make sure you do though once you've done this is uh, take a little bit of kitchen roll when you've finished, just wipe it down to wipe off any excess resin and what I always do at the end of it is pop it into my curing station and give it a couple of minutes blast just to cure everything and anything up. As usual, I'm going to be giving it some matte black air primer and I'm going to be covering the whole of the model with this to make sure that uh, the resin is covered. And once I've done this, I'm going to use a little bit of zenithal highlighting on it. So I want to make sure that the black is as much black as it can be, especially the top part around the face. And I'm going to move on to the white then and I'm just going to literally aim from the top down as if the light is hitting certain parts of her. So I won't go from underneath, I won't go from the side. I will just go top down and when you look at her then you will see that the underside of her will be dark and the top part of her will be light and that will be what I use to get the contours of the face. Now I'm mixing Darkwood and Crusader skin, the uh, speed paint range from Army Painter, because I want it to be an alien. I don't want it to look like flesh colours. I've done loads and loads of flesh colours and I want to, I just want something a little bit different for this model. So I've mixed the two and it's a little bit of an experiment just to see how it comes out. But I can tell you I'm really, really pleased with the alien-y kind of look on a face. Now the speed paints are great. They're really, really good and I've quite enjoyed using them. Um, first time here that I've mixed them together to give me a random colour but I'm really glad I did it and I'm really glad how it all came out. She's got like a reddy yellowish kind of skin and uh, it just looks absolutely incredible. Now don't forget that the links to these paints that I'm using are in the description and uh, I am an Amazon affiliate which means that a small amount will go to the channel if you buy directly from my link which would be appreciated. But don't worry, you won't pay any more buying from the links that I send. The uh, cost is exactly the same to you guys. Now I've continued with the experimental skin colours on her arms, as you can see. And I've tried something else on here as well. I've, I've plastered on the speed paints, the same mixture as before. And I'm going to use a kitchen towel just to wipe it off. Anyone who's seen Star Trek knows the weird and wonderful skins that you see. And there's all blemishes and marks on them. Well, I want something similar on my alien and it worked a treat. I'm just going to give a few more layers over the top, but when we stop and have a closer look at the skin, you'll see there's some fantastic blemishes on there and marks, and that there's the one I'm on about really. It just again takes away the boringness from the skin, and it gives us something really, really interesting to look at. And uh, again, she is an alien, and that's how I want her to look. Just to add another bit of highlighted tone, I'm going to use some flump skin from Army Painter. And I'm just going to dry brush using these Army Painter dry brushes to highlight some of the areas on the outside of the face and the nose and her arms and her shoulders, just to give a little bit more texture to the way that she's going to look. Dry brushing is a technique that most of you are going to experience at some stage. And if you haven't done it, learn how to do it. It's amazing. And there we go. That's what the skin looks like on my alien. And I'm absolutely chuffed to bits with it. As you can see, she She's got like a pinky hue, but she's definitely not human coloured and uh, we'll, we'll let you decide what planet she's from. Now those of you that watch my videos know I like to paint black in the eyes normally, but because she's such a dark figure, I'm just going straight for the white into the insides of her eyes, a white mixed with a hint of blue. And I'm going to pop in some pupils using some matte black, and then I'm just going to work those pupils, making them larger and making sure, as usual, she doesn't look cockeyed. 
Once I've done that, a yellow iris and a little bit of red under the eye, a little bit of brown above the eye, and then I'm moving on to the lips. Now the lips, I just used some pink for the inner part of the mouth, first of all, and I gave a little bit of slaughter red as well. And on the outside of the lips, I just gave it a little bit of pallid bone on top of the pink, just to change the highlight and the look of it all. And it looks really, really nice when it comes out. Now leaving the pallid bone speed paint out, this is my secret weapon for blonde hair and I'm just going to pop it onto our model here. Um, the good thing with this pallid bone being a speed paint is it just gives it depth and layers the hair really really well as you can see there and it also comes out like a really yellowy colour especially over a lighter white um, zenithal highlight. I've gone for some rough iron to do the face uh, metal work that's on there. Now I could have gone for silver, but I just wanted something a little bit different to the norm. I don't want it to look like a Terminator, so I've gone for the rough iron look. And again, the joy about making your own model where there's no real definitive way of doing it is you can just play about with it as you want. Bugbear Brown for her armour, or I should say her uh, armour vest, her bulletproof vest. And I'm just giving the whole thing a coat of this. And um, I'm going to not keep it to this colour, I'm going to actually use some highlights on it as well, but I wanted to give it a base colour and uh, I've used a big brush now to just splodge it all over there until it's uh, covered the whole thing. Sticking with the theme, the rough iron is also going to be used for this really uh, meticulous metalwork around her arm. It looks great, doesn't it? And skeleton bone, now I love skeleton bone. Using my wet palette there from Army Painter, you can find a link to that in the description again uh, from Amazon. Won't cost you guys a penny, but uh, a little bit will come back to the channel. The secret with dry brushing is not much paint on the brush, a nice big brush, get most of your paint off, and then just literally splodge it across, light strokes, fast strokes. Um, you don't have to be particularly particularly careful you'll, you'll try it you'll, you'll get the gist of it um, but it makes such a fantastic difference we'll show you again a little bit later on how to dry brush but um, as you can see I've just put like a that skeleton bone across the front of the brown and it really just gives a great great contrast color to her vest now don't look in the background because I'm a messy messy painter when I'm at work but I found in the mess this strong tone and I'm going to use this now to give her leathery kind of vest a real aged and uh, a look that makes it look like it's been battered and worn and that's what I want really. Now the joy with the the, the sort of paint on tones, again you can get the set from the army painter, um, is they'll add a, a different colour, a brown, a light colour, a skin colour, a flesh colour and uh, the, the washes are just great, they just add that additional layer and they're not much hard work but they certainly make it look really um, antique. Now more dry brushing going on there on the skin. I just wanted to give her a little bit more of a highlight all over and uh, again there we go all done. Moving back now I've, I've, I've decided I wanted to give the legs a much darker coat for a trouser so I have took it back to the airbrush Use some trusty cling film to protect the hard work I've done so far and I'll give her another blast of black and now I'm just going to spend a little bit of time doing some of the finer points, a little bit of brown on her shoelaces and on the straps of her boots, a little bit of silver there just to do the laces and I've gone over some of these as well with some of the speed paint, the uh, brown speed paint just to give it another coat another depth another layer but you know what just experiment try things play with things get the paints out and see how it looks i found some of the most amazing things just by trial and error really and and there we go that's how she looks like i'm really happy with how she's come out um you can see what i mean about some of the shades and the, the highlighting and the washes have really done their job really really well so so pleased Moving on to the base now and just using some yellow and some primer and I'm literally just going to splodge it all over there, nothing uh, intricate here, uh, with a few drops of yellow mixed into it and uh, you'll see why I've done this, it does make life a little easier. Now I could have done this on the airbrush but I, I didn't want to, I wanted to do it with a brush, I, I quite enjoy doing bases this way so once you've got your paint splodged on there, get a nice big brush and uh, let the stress get oozed from your body by the medium of painting just rub it all over there get a nice even layer right the way across and that gray and that yellow just adds a lovely little bit of tone to it um looking at the other part of the base and it's quite an intricate base i wanted the rocks that match the base itself the lower base to look exactly the same so same process again primer 
with a little bit of yellow splodged on there and again your big brush and just brush it in um, I put them together quite often just to make sure that the two parts of the base are, uh, are are matching but I haven't glued them together yet because I thought the big part here would be easier to work on if it was separate and uh, again really enjoyable really relaxing just splodge that paint on What I'm going to do now is get some more of that strong tone, uh, some more of that wash. Nothing simple here, just nothing difficult I should say, just splodge it on, brush it in. It is as simple as that and it just adds that like a dirty brown effect, making sure that you get all over it. Now look at the inside bits of the rocks there, see the black, see how it's done its job? Really, really great. Now in complete contrast, before I do anything else with the metalwork bits of this, I'm going to give it some black all over, just some matte black big brush and whop it all the way over there including all the wires. Um, I'm, I'm going to do this because what I'm going to do after is I'm going to give it a little bit of shiny silver and I'm going to dry brush it. Use your brush, dab some of that silver on, get all that silver bar a little bit off using a kitchen towel or, or a mat uh, so, that, so there's hardly anything left and then gently, oh so gently, just rub it across the top. Now if there's too much on there just get some more off if there's not enough on there put it on but you'll find a little bit goes a long way and uh, really fast strokes not that fast obviously I've speeded it up so you don't have to watch it all but look at the difference it's made on the black it's, it's just amazing. Silver on black gives a fantastic metallic look every single time. It doesn't matter how many times I dry brush silver onto black, it, it amazes me every single time. Just keeping the dry brushing now, I'm just going to use some skeleton bone on the base. I just want to add some highlights to the outer edges of the rocks really. I don't want to overpower it but I just want to give it a little bit of depth if you will, just some shadow and I'm uh, going to give it a case of the same all over and I'm going to use a little bit of brown now, the last part really, just to give the, the top edges of the rocks a little bit of definition and a little bit of depth. Well that's it, I think it's about time that we uh, moved on to the final stage, the best part of it, the Army Painter Basings Kit. Um, do I need to say you can get this in the description from my affiliate Amazon link? Oh I don't think I do but I've just said it. Bit of glue on there, um, I've, I'm popping some glue on the inner bits where the metalwork joins the rocks and then I'm going to spuriously splodge some across the whole thing. And the reason I'm doing this really is just to give it its last layer of depth and I'm going to use some of the, um, it's like a sand effect really, just to sprinkle on. And that's all you need to give it that je ne sais quoi, that final look. Well, she's all done. I think it's time we uh, I shut up and we had a look just to see what she looks like.